Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the most useless NFL stadium features. Uh, it's kind of self-explanatory, guys. I'm going to go for through four or five different stadiums, talk about some useless features. It could involve their roof. It could involve kind of a random cork within the stadium, maybe even an exterior renovation. But let's begin. One of the most useless features of a stadium is the AT&T Stadium retractable roof. Now, guys, there's going to be several roofs on this list, list but when it comes to AT&T Stadium, it has to come away as the number one most useless because there's a giant jumbotron hanging down in the center. Has AT&T Stadium ever had their roof open for a one o'clock Dallas Cowboys game? I would say probably not. Although to be fair to AT&T Stadium, the Dallas Cowboys basically never play at one o'clock, which would be noon central. But yeah, I don't think if I've ever seen I don't know, maybe someone can remind me of a time back in like 2010, 2011 of the Dallas Cowboys playing a one o'clock home game with the sun shining down onto the field and the roof open. And I think, honestly, it just wouldn't make logical sense because the giant jumbotron in the center hanging over the retractable roof would create a massive shadow. So it's just a strange thing. The only time the AT&T Stadium roof will ever be open is if it's like a Monday night or a Sunday night game in Dallas, probably later in the year when it's colder out, you could get it open. Very similar to the Arizona Cardinals Stadium, although at least the Cardinals open theirs a little bit more, and they have hosted several Super Bowls where that roof has been open. Either way, AT&T Stadium, the retractable roof, it was done, honestly, just because it looks kind of cool, I guess. And also, you do have, like, the translucent aspect of it. You can kind of see a little bit of natural light coming in. They did a good job with that. Obviously, it's very uh, key that AT&T Stadium, if you're going to be a retractable roof that's basically always closed, at least make sure there is a little bit of natural light that comes into it. Also, AT&T Stadium does a really good job right above their upper deck. They have a giant, win well, I wouldn't say it's a giant, a long horizontal window going around the entire upper deck. And then they have kind of the window of God is what I like to call it. You guys know that window with all those kind of floating seats behind the one end zone. And during the four o'clock games, the sun will shine in and it'll create like rays and sunbeams so they do a good job of letting natural light into their stadium but the retractable roof it's never open and, and like how would you even open it where, where would the shadow of the you know jumbotron go would it just go straight down onto the field at a one o'clock game it'd be so weird so yeah the AT&T stadium retractable roof is completely useless outside of night games the next one we're going to be looking at it is NRG stadium so this is a stadium that I personally really do not like the fact that they get all these major events they've had Super Bowls they've had college football playoff games even the national championship it is crazy, but then again, it's just based off the fact that they're lo it's located in Houston, Texas. Either way, their roof is completely useless. They did open it a few times, like back in 2013, 2014, and it does create some wacky shadows just because of the overhangs, you know, behind both of the end zones. Overall, just looking at it, you do get a decent translucent vibe like, with it always being closed, you can see when the Texans are playing at home, it, it, it's not necessarily dark, so at least it's it's semi-translucent, but when it comes to opening it, they, they just will not open it. For whatever reason, it's not like they have bad weather in, in Houston, Texas. It's not like, you know, it's 100 degrees. Sure, it's maybe a little bit hotter, but they refuse to open their retractable roof. This has been going on now for about five straight years where they just will not open it for a one o'clock game. You would think the NFL would say, listen, once we get later in the year, maybe open it up. Maybe if they have like a four o'clock game or something, it's like you're pulling teeth trying to get these teams to open their retractable roofs. It is useless. They do not use it at all anymore. And then they start making up the excuse, oh, you know, it gets louder if you keep the noise in without the roof or, or, or with the roof on top to, to trap the noise, which is really just ridiculous. I mean, you know how many teams play at open stadiums and they still have great home field advantage. I don't really understand that, but that's another useless retractable roof. The next one, it is Allegiant Stadium, the new super stadium in Las Vegas. And the reason that this feature is on the list, which is their translucent roof, is because it is so dark. Now, I understand they dimmed it because 
they, you're dealing with really hot temperatures in Las Vegas, but still, they made it virtually cloudy. The roof looks cloudy. You know when you walk into like a greenhouse? That's what it looks like, like looking up at that roof. You can see other translucent roofs throughout the NFL. They look much brighter, much more vibrant, especially on the exterior. Like the exterior of this thing, it just looks like silver coating you would see that would be installed in the 80s or the 90s. That's the one thing. Allegiant Stadium looks amazing from the ground because they have beautiful exterior lighting that goes around and lines the entire stadium and it's just straight black with white lighting. It's amazing. But when you get to the like aerial view of it, it looks so bad, man. And it's because of that circular, you know, little donut-shaped roof in the center where, like, they added a bunch of extra padding to the top. And, and again, I understand why they did it, but still, the it, it, this one comes off not as a dome because they do have a pretty big window, but it's not a ton of natural light that's being let into that stadium, if I am being honest, and I've gone over why that is. I looked into it because when you look at the first renderings of Allegiant Stadium, it's a beautiful translucent roof that looks the exact same as SoFi Stadium, basically completely see-through, which would actually allow for some sun to come onto the field, but it would just be dimmed down a little bit because it'd have to pass through the translucent roof, which would cool off the sun, but apparently they're like, no, we're not doing it. A lot of it is... Vegas is very hot, but a lot of it is also you want to go a little bit cheaper, let's be honest, just install this into it and really block out any of the sun rays while trying to keep it at least a little bit translucent. I mean, even if you want to compare it to NRG, at this point, I would kind of consider NRG a translucent roof dome stadium because it's never open, and their translucent roof lets in way more natural light than Las Vegas, even if you're just watching the games on TV. That's the vibe that I get personally in discussing that, but yeah, their translucent roof, its ability to let in natural light, it's kind of completely useless. Uh, the next useless feature, this is a renovation at Bank of America Stadium, and a lot, a lot of people don't even know this happened, but yeah, they renovated Bank of America Stadium, the exterior, okay? I, I guess that's fine. The only issue is it's like they stopped halfway up. So you can see the area at which they renovated it. They put in a bunch of nice new glass windows. You can see the little bridge formation. That looks nice. But then look above it. it it's like they just stopped and the entire top where like the upper deck is, is completely hollowed out still. So it, to me, it looks even worse. Well, I, I wouldn't say it looks worse, but it just looks very strange and very peculiar. And the idea of renovating your stadium exterior, but only doing it halfway, it just comes off looking really cheap to me. Like, like the entire upper deck is still just a skeleton, you know, and it's a concrete skeleton. So to me, that feature, like the renovation of the exterior, completely useless just based off the fact that it, it's not finished. If you were to finish it and build up the entire exterior with paneling, with windows, that would look really cool. Now, it really wouldn't make much sense because you'd be investing almost like $750 million into Bank of America Stadium when we all know Bank of America Stadium at this point it either needs a huge interior renovation or they're just going to build a new stadium probably in the early 2030s. And I think that's what's going to happen. This stadium only probably has about 10 years left in its life. There is some slight dialogue about possibly building a new stadium, but we would expect it to really kick up in the next three or four years because this thing is getting older. It is two giant walls of seats and the exterior renovation, you can tell it was half done. They really didn't want to put too much money into it because I'm guessing they do want to move to a new stadium, but that feature is just very strange. Uh, the next weird, useless stadium feature, it is the drinking rails in, in the upper deck at FedEx Field. So we all know FedEx Field, the worst stadium in the NFL. We're still waiting for a new stadium to be announced for the Washington Commanders. They might actually change their name first. We will see. But yes, they had to remove a ton of seating in the upper deck. And I'm not even going to talk about how horrible the upper deck configuration is. We'll just talk about the idea of having drinking rails at the tippy top of NFL stadiums. Basically, this never happens. No one ever sits up there. It's completely useless. The commanders are normally bad anyways. Are you really going to go up, sit on a drink, or stand on a drinking rail with a beer watching the commanders lose to a tanking Giants team? It's just really bad. I will say... 
Something that's always interesting about this stadium, and, and I'm guessing it has to do with how far east you know, Landover, Maryland is, but they get some crazy shadows late in the season. Like, there's, they will kick off a game at 1 o'clock, and shadows would already be covering half of the field. I think I've said that in another video, but it is very strange. But either way, the idea of putting in those drinking rails, they just wanted a way to remove seats and be as cheap as possible. And the cheapest thing you can do is put, it, put in, like, standing room areas that just look really bad. Uh, and then the next useless feature, now people might get mad at me for this one, it is the pool at Everbank Stadium, it's just like for 99.99999% of us, nobody's going into a pool at an NFL stadium, nobody's getting into their bathing suit at an NFL stadium, let's be honest, you're really not much of a fan of the Jaguars if you want to get into the pool during the game it just seems like such a niche thing and this isn't me saying the pool is necessarily a bad thing because it's not it makes the stadium unique the cabanas everything the florida vibe i get it but it's just the idea of the fact that yes it is a useless feature nobody really is going to use it and it takes up a giant part of the stadium the second deck area behind the one end zone that is a quintessential useless feature of a stadium because it is kind of like their big thing and, and really 99.9% .9 of us have no inclination to even use that thing. But either way, guys, those are just some useless NFL stadium features. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.